How's it going my peeps, it's now time for the raw results slash highlights and review video. I'll go over the results as always, give you guys some of the highlights in my opinion, and give you guys my thoughts, my review on the show. So it kicks off with the authority coming out, Triple H and Stephanie McMahon, and uh, they go over how tonight Daniel Bryan is going to surrender, or is going to have a choice um, on whether or not you know he surrenders, he gives away the championship, because he can't compete. And then they move over talking about the Shields and the matchup between Evolution and Shield. Also saying that tonight there's going to be a contract signing between Evolution and the Shields for their match at Payback. Now Triple H tells the Shield that, you know, they, ha they also have a choice. They can either adapt and not show up to the contract signing, not show up to the match at Payback. And or they can perish by, you know, showing up to the match. And then after that, they want to address something else. They talk about Brad Maddox and uh, how last week... Well, actually, they bring out ba Brad Maddox first. Not Bad Maddox. Brad Maddox, anyways. So he comes out, and then pretty much they ask him, why did you you know, set the shield or Dean Ambrose and Reigns as official commentators last week in the match between Batista and Seth Rollins? And Triple H goes over how he only wanted officials uh, to be at ringside. And Brad Maddox says, you know, uh, he didn't have a choice. The Shield kind of forced him. And, you know, uh, Seth McMahon says, you know, yeah, I did hear about that. But, uh, you know, we also feel like we don't have a choice. And then Kane's music hits. He comes out and Brad Maddox is freaking out. He's trying to get out of the ring. Um... Uh, so then Triple H hits him with a punch, and then Brad Maddox falls, Kane gets in the ring, he grabs him by the throat, choke slams him, and then follows that up, and by the way, somebody in the crowd chanted or uh, screamed at Kane, don't be a lemon, be a rosebud or whatever. So yeah, after the choke slam, Kane hits a tombstone on Brad Maddox, and then he raises his arms up, does the pyro thing, but the, the pyros or the flames or whatever were pretty delayed. Once he, you know, put his arms down, it was like a second later or two that the pyros actually went off. And then his music hits. But then Stephanie says, oh, turn the music down and, you know, bring the lights back up. And then she says, you know, we didn't finish what we wanted to say. And then basically she fires Brad Maddox. After that, it was Cesaro versus Rob Van Dam. So the number one contender for the IC Championship versus the number one contender for the US Championship. And on commentary was Bad News Barrett's. When he actually went on commentary, said, hey, it's me, it's me, it's BNB. So, uh, Cesar actually won the match when Barrett, actually before Barrett tried to interfere, Rob Van Dam hit a uh, super kick on Barrett on the outside. And, by the way, at some point in the match, you know, uh, Cesar grabbed Rob Van Dam in like a back suplex position. No, actually not a back suplex position. It was I think it was a power slam position. And he pretty much just threw... Uh, Rob Van Dam face first or head first on the barricade. Uh, you know, it, it, I thought maybe you know uh, Rob Van Dam would be hurt after that, but you know, seemed okay afterwards. But yeah, uh, back to what I was saying. Cesaro wins the match when Rob Van Dam tries to go for the uh, five star frog splash. Barrett tries to interfere. Rob Van Dam at that point, I believe he got off the top turnbuckle and kicked Barrett away. But then that distraction allowed Cesaro to grab Rob Van Dam and hit a German suplex into a pin for the three counts. So, yeah, it seems like Cesaro has been using the German suplex now as a finisher for uh, for a couple matches. Actually, I don't, I don't know if it's a finisher, if it's just a, a move he uses um, to surprise his opponents when they get distracted or whatever. And then after the match, Sheamus' music hits. He comes out running towards the ring. Uh, him and Cesaro trade like a few blows. Cesaro pushes him towards the rope. Sheamus comes back with a bro kick. And while Cesaro's down, he grabs Cesaro's arm and shakes it. You know, I guess kind of, you know, uh, going back to SmackDown where they had a match. And Cesaro refused to shake Sheamus' head. And after that, it was Eva Marie versus Summer Rae. I was a bit confused on who was the heel in that match. Because Eva Marie was acting like a heel. But I'm still not sure if Summer Rae's a face or a heel. And towards the end of the match, when Fandango and Layla come out for distraction, Cesaro was kind of, uh, Summer Rae was kind of freaking out like a heel, so I'm not sure. And, uh, Nikki Bella was at ringside with Eva Marie. 
And so yeah, in the end, Layla and Fandango come out and they make out on the stage. That distracts some Marie. She freaks out. She gets angry. Eva Marie rolls her up. One, two, three. Eva Marie wins the match. And after that, backstage, we had Batista and Randy talking in Triple H's office. Cody and Goldust come in. Basically, they say they're not booked. They don't have a match, so they want a match with a tag team. And Triple H and Randy say, tell Cody and uh, Goldust, that's great, but, you know, Triple H doesn't have time for you guys. And then Randy brings uh, brings up how, you know, besides, you know, I beat you guys, you know, a year ago and got you fired talking about Cody Rhodes. And Cody says, oh, yeah, well, you know what? We got our jobs back by beating the Shield, the same team that beat you. And then eventually Triple H comes in and he's wondering what's going on. And, you know, Cody and Goldust want the match, so he gives them the match. Uh, so he makes it official, Cody and Goldust versus Batista and Randy. And he says, but it's not going to be any ordinary ordinary match. And he asks Batista and Randy if they're up for the workout, and they say, yeah. And by the way, something else, uh, Co I, something I forgot to mention is Cody called Batista a uh, skinny jean sellout, which Batista didn't appreciate. And... You know, Triple H, after announcing the match, making it official, he tells Cody and Goldust to leave his office. And, you know, uh, they talk about Cody's insult uh, towards Batista. And then after that, it was El Torito versus Drew McIntyre. And uh, El Torito ends up winning the match when Drew McIntyre goes for like a top rope or top turnbuckle superplex. But El Torito gets out of it and... Um, Drew McIntyre gets distracted by the Lost Matadores, El Torito just pulls Drew McIntyre's leg, he falls down, he covers him, wins the match. After the match, uh, the 3MB take out Lost Matadores, so El Torito's on his own, Hornswoggle attacks El Torito, and then he pulls his, um, his tail and takes it off him, and then El Torito just runs holding his, you know, uh, his butt and runs towards the back, and that was it. Afterwards, it was time for Bray Wyatt's message to John Cena. So he comes out, you know, the Wyatt family in the ring. And uh, he cuts the promo. It's a pretty long promo, honestly. I, for I forgot some of it. But <laughs> uh, eventually he calls out Jerry the King Lawler. Because Jerry the King Lawler is, is a friend of John Cena. He tells him to, you know, come down the ring. He just wants to have a talk with him. Jerry the King Lawler kind of refuses. Says he's, he's going to stay on commentary. And so then Bray Wyatt tells Luke Harper and Eric Rowan to go get him. So they go get him, or go next to Jerry the King of Lawler, telling him, come on, you know, go to the ring. And um, Bray Wyatt tells Michael Cole not to move, and he tells JBL, don't try and be a hero. And then uh, JBL actually, you know, gets off the commentary table, I guess, to try and save Jerry the King of Lawler, but... Uh, instead, he gets beat up, they grab him, and Luke Harper, Eric Rowan grabs him, and Luke Harper hits the discus clothesline on JBL, and then JBL's knocked out for, like, the rest of the segment. So then Jerry the, Jerry the, King, Jerry the King Lawler eventually gets inside the ring, Bray Wyatt places a chair, tells him to sit down, talks about how, you know, you're, you're a friend of John Cena, right? And, you know, throughout all these past couple of years... Uh, you've fed all these people all this garbage about John Cena, how he's a hero, how he's this and that, but he never questioned his morals or, you know, why he's doing what he does. And, you know, uh, basically he say, he tells, you know, to, to keep it short here, he tells Jerry the King Lawler what happens next is uh, a necessary evil and pretty much he's about to hit Sister Abigail on him. But then John Cena's music hits, he comes out, but Eric and Luke Harper take care of John Cena while Bray Wyatt holds Jerry the King Lawler down. And then he goes again for Sister Abigail and Jerry the King Lawler. But this time, the Usos interrupt and they save uh, Cena and Jerry the King Lawler. So Jerry the King Lawler goes back to, you know, his seat. And then John Cena proceeds to talk about Bray Wyatt and their match this Sunday payback. And tells Bray Wyatt that payback for you is going to be a bitch. But the highlight for me in this entire segment... Or the thing that's caught my interest the most, or just like how 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 come JBL gets hit with a discus clothesline? Now keep in mind JBL, you know, <laughs> it's like when you go from a wrestler to a commentator, 
your overall, let's, um, you know, like overall in the game, whatever, but overall in the WWE goes from like an 80 something or 90 something to like a 60 or something like that. Because JBL, you know, he, when, when you're competing, you get clotheslined all the time, but now all of a sudden he gets this clothesline and he needs, he's knocked out for the entire segment and he needs medical attention. He's knocked out more than a 10 count, more than the last man standing match. And he needs medical attention, and he can't uh, commentate for a while afterwards. But, uh, yeah, afterwards, it was Rusev versus Zack Ryder. Zack Ryder came out with the American flag. He just says, it's Memorial Day today, and then right away he gets interrupted by Alina. And then she introduces Rusev. Rusev beats Ryder in, like, under a minute with his finisher, the Camel Clutch, or the Accolade. After the match, he doesn't let go of the Camel Clutch, so Biggie comes out for the save. He ends up clotheslining Rusev out of the ring and then grabbing the American flag and swinging it, swinging it around. Following that, we see Stephanie McMahon talking backstage with Del Rio. We can't hear what they're saying. And then Batista and Randy come out for their match up against Cody and Goldust. And the ending of the match was pretty cool, actually. Uh, you had Goda, Goldust and Randy as the two legal, legal men. Cody goes, after hitting a disaster kick on Batista, who was on the apron... Cody goes for a disaster kick now, this time on Randy, but Randy catches him in midair with an RKO, pretty sweet RKO, but then Randy doesn't go for the cover right away. Instead, he goes ahead and punches um, Goldust, who was on the apron, takes him down, and then he picks Cody once again, picks him back up, and hits another RKO, covers him, and wins the match. And then uh, Justin Roberts announces that he was just informed that this match was an elimination match, and now, this upcoming match is going to be Batista and Randy versus Goldust in a No Holds Barred Elimination Match. Or No Holds Barred Handicap Match. So then Batista and Randy beat up Goldust on the outside. They bring him back in the ring. Randy hits the DDT on Goldust. He hits the RKO. And then Batista hits the Batista Bomb on Goldust. Covers him. And Evolution win the match. After that, it was Bo Dallas' Raw debut. It was Bo Dallas versus Sin Cara, a rematch from SmackDown. And Bo Dallas, before the match, cuts a promo saying, you know, we don't conquer the world. We don't conquer the world, we conquer ourselves. And then in the match, he eventually wins with the Stratus faction, Trish Stratus' uh, move. And, you know, it's just weird seeing Bo Dallas, or any wrestler for that matter, doing the, the Stratus faction as a finisher... Because whenever I see that, you know, I associate it with Trish, uh, Trish, because she was the last one in the WWE to use that move. Uh, so, yeah, you know, I'm like, why is he using this? You know, th out of all the finishers, why is he using this move? It's like I associate it as, you know, female wrestler's move. Although, I don't think there really is, you know, any female-specific move or whatever. It's just, you know, a wrestling move is a wrestling move. But anyways, yeah, he wins with the Stratus faction. Although, I'm pretty sure that's not what he calls it. And... After the match, she cuts another Bullleaf promo, uh, saying, if you give it your all, you're a winner, you just gotta believe. And then he shakes Sin Cara's hand and hugs him. And then Stephen McMahon comes out to strip Daniel O'Brien of the championship, or to see if he's going to surrender the championship. He comes out, and he says, you know, yeah, the uh, the right thing to do, or actually says there's no shame in surrendering, surrendering the title since he can't compete. And the fans deserve, you know, an awesome champion that can you know uh, compete defend the title all that but uh and stephanie mcmahon says yeah and you know i could also just strip you of the championship right here but you know she chooses not to do that and then brian says that but he's not he, he's he's not going to do it because doing that would be throwing everything back at the fans when you know they were the ones you know supporting brian uh against the authority making their voices heard when they didn't like things and anyways, Brian says he's going to tell Stephanie a word she doesn't hear much. And he says, no, no, no. You know, he's not going to surrender the title. And then Stephanie says, you know, she she was afraid something like that was going to happen. So then she shows Brian footage of when Brian was getting stretchered out and Brie Bella pushed Stephanie McMahon. So Stephanie says, you know, you see Brie Bella put her hands on me and actions like that, you know, they have consequences. So she tells Brian... You know, you're going to have to still pay back to choose if you either surrender the title or Stephanie McMahon will fire Brie Bella. So then she leaves. 
And uh, so, yeah, a payback. Brian either surrenders the, surrenders the title or Brie Bella gets fired. Afterwards, it was Alicia Fox versus Emma with Paige watching backstage. And uh, I thought Alicia Fox was going to win the match, especially when at some point in the match, she puts Emma, she sticks Emma's head out on the outside of the ring and she hits her with a scissors kick. And then she rolls her back in the ring, but Emma actually kicks out. So I was surprised because, you know, isn't it a scissors kick Alicia Fox's finisher? But anyways, uh, shortly after, Emma rolls up Alicia Fox, gets a victory. And then after the match, Alicia Fox attacks her. After she attacks Emma, she goes crazy once again. And she says, she screams, she's not a loser. She grabs the ring bell, rings it a couple times. And then she pushes one of the stagehands, or, or, or one of the cameramen. I think it was sitting on the barricade or something. She push, push, pushes him over, and then she... Uh, grabs his shirt, puts it like over his head while he's down, and she gives him a big ass wedgie. She even the the guy's underwear even tear, <laughs> tears apart a bit. And then after that, she grabs like a, a, a dyed coke and a Fanta and kind of smashes them together and tricks him like Stone Cold, I guess. And then she throws I think one one of the cans on the guy she just gave a wedgie to, and throws some of the Fanta or whatever on uh, Emma. And, uh, yeah, just, uh, once again, Alicia Fox snapping after the match. And while she was attacking Emma after the match, I was thinking maybe Paige was gonna save her, but, but I guess not, because Paige didn't come out. Following that, it was Adam Rose making his in-ring debut versus Damon Sandow. Damon Sandow came out as Davy Crockett, and, uh, Adam Rose picked up the victory. After the match, Swagger attacks Adam Rose... And Adam Rose then hits a spine buster. From then on, Adam Rose just beat up Jack Swagger until Jack Swagger uh, got out of the ring. And Adam Rose yelled out, don't don't touch my lemon. And that was it. And then Sheamus took on Del Rio. Uh, throughout the match, Del Rio was working on Sheamus' head. So Sheamus was kind of dizzy towards the end. He didn't know where he was. Del Rio kept kicking him with enziguries and kicks. And uh, when he hit the super kick, I thought you know, Sheamus might be down, and, you know, he might not kick out, but he actually kicked out, and then Del Rio went for the cross arm breaker, Sheamus countered out of it, bounced off the ropes, bro kick, covered Del Rio, won the match, but then after the match, Paul Heyman announced to Sheamus as a winner, calling him stupid, and then he also mentions that his client, Brock Lesnar, broke the streak, and, uh, then from behind, Cesaro comes in and hits a big boot on Sheamus, and then he attacks his head a bit more, punches him in the head, knees him a couple times, and then eventually hits the neutralizer, and then leaves the ring. So then came time for the contract signing between The Shield and Evolution. Shield come out first, and Roman Reigns starts throwing around chairs, or actually grabs the chairs. There were like six chairs, you know, for every member of each team to sit down. He grabs the chairs, throws them out of the ring, so does Dean Ambrose. Um, Evolution then comes out, and also they took out the table, by the way, and Evolution, once Evolution comes out, Triple H once again tells him, you know, you sure you want to sign that, because if you sign that, that's going to be the last time we're going to see the Shields, because, you know, they're going to take them out, they're going to perish, Shield signed it anyways, every single member signed it, and then Roman Reigns throws the contract to the outside, so, so Evolution can sign it, Evolution also signs it. They get in the ring, they all fight, and uh, at the very beginning, the Shield gets the advantage, and Triple H gets sent to the outside, uh, Seth Rollins even hits the flipping senton on, I believe, both Randy and Batista, or it might have been Randy and Triple H, I'm not sure, two members of Evolution, and then Triple H grabs a sledgehammer from under the ring, and then he hits Roman Reigns, who kind of poked out of the ring to check on Triple H, or check where Triple H is, or something, so he gets hit with the sledgehammer, Triple H gets back in the ring, Seth Rollins and Dean Ambrose attack him, but Randy and Batista attack Dean Ambrose and, and, uh, and Seth Rollins, Randy hits the RKO on, I think it was Seth Rollins, and then from then, from, from then on, Triple H hits the sledgehammer, hits every single member of the Shield with the sledgehammer in the head. So, he hits, uh, I think he hit home Roman Reigns first in the head once again, once Roman Reigns got back in the ring. And then Seth Rollins, and then Dean Ambrose. And after that, they grab Roman Reigns, and take take off the top of the, the announcer's table, and they hit the triple powerbomb through the announcer's table. 
on Reigns with Batista, of course, delivering the power bomb. Or well, it's a triple power bomb, but you know, Batista get ha, Randy and Triple H put you know Reigns on Batista's shoulders. So that was it for the show. Uh, the Shield then celebrate, or uh, actually not the Shield. I mean Evolution. You know, fist bump, and that was it. So highlights of tonight's Raw. Well, highlights I'd say I guess the ending segments with the Shield and Evolution brawl or contract signing that ended in a brawl. And also Big E taking down Alexander Rusev, or just Rusev now. Um, he's the first person to take down Rusev on his own. And when you look back, the only per- the only people that took down Rusev on Raw or SmackDown were our true for Xavier Woods, but they took him down together. They didn't take him take him down, you know, on their own. Uh, so I'm, I'm thinking they might have match a payback. But as far as my overall rating for tonight's Raw, uh, personally, I didn't really enjoy Raw. Uh, that much tonight. It wasn't that enter- entertaining. Uh, there wasn't any great match. And th- there wasn't any, like, a major... You know, I thought maybe there was going to be a major uh, part with the Daniel Bryan, Daniel Bryan possibly vacating, vacating the championship. But it seems to, you know, they, they've pushed it back to payback. Um... Man, if I have to give a, a rating for tonight's show, I'd give it like a a 4.5 on 10. So, yeah, uh, it's, there has definitely been some better Raws. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, as always, you can click that like button down below. I'd really appreciate it. And with that said, I'm like, guys, see ya.